happy to have Roberto Navigli here. Uh, Roberto is coming for uh, Roman's defense, which will uh, take place tomorrow, and we are very happy to have him here. He's the, uh, one of the foremost experts in multilingual NLP and all the new kind of NLP wave um, uh, that has been you know, published recently. So Roberto is a professor at NASA Pienza in Rome. Um, he won recently an ERC uh, starting grant on multilingual world sense design migration. He had also a Google Focused Research Award, a Meta Prize from gra for groundbreaking, groundbreaking work in overcoming language barriers. And he is the father of BabelNet. <laughs> he has uh, two main occupations these days, uh, publishing amazing research papers on BabelNet and printing t-shirts <laughs> about BabelNet. Which is so. the, the best, the best <laughs> business, actually. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> but we're not selling, we're not selling. So <laughs> it could so be anyway. potentially the best business. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Philip. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, this talk is uh, an overview of a number of uh, research works that we've been doing in the last few years. So that's why I called it rec uh, Recent Achievements in Large Scale Multilingual Text Understanding. And it's, uh, it, it involved a lot of people Tiziano Flati, Daniel Vanella, Andrea Moro, Francesco Cecconita, Hair Pilever, Filippo Marponzetto, Jose Camacho Goyados, Ignacio Jacobacci, Federico Scott Safava, and Claudio De Libovi. <laughs> okay, so now you can relax a little bit. Um, and dream. Okay, so the thing is. Uh, we have a dream, not the big one that we all know, but uh, we also we, we have a, a, a dream that uh, every day uh, we would like to to uh, come true. But uh, when we use uh, the uh, state of the art systems like uh, statistical machine translation systems or uh, other kinds like information retrieval uh, tools and so on, we uh, keep um, uh, uh, having problems, like we, we are frustrated by quite simple um, sentences that are not understood by computers. There's a lot of hype about, you know, computers being intelligent and more and more uh, uh, n n newspaper articles about... Uh, uh uh, artificial intelligences and so on. But the point is that when we use state-of-the-art, for example, statistical machine translation systems, we get things like these are movies in which the music genre, e.g. rock is an important element, blah, blah, blah. Talks about rock uh, in the music sense and we get translated in Spanish, uh, por ejemplo, roca, which is the geologic sense of rock. Then we give it another chance and we say we can look at how this vast slug of molten underground rock was injected. Maybe it has a prior on the geological sense, but the problem is that you have a danger underground. And underground rock gets translated into French, for example, ce vast bouchon de rock underground fondu a été injecté. Uh, same in Italian, questo vasto slug, which doesn't exist in Italian, del rock underground fusa. So it's very strange. Uh, unfortunately, you know, these are quite s apparently quite simple things because there's a lot of context here, but the problem is the system just doesn't understand. So that's our dream. So we want to go beyond what we think our dogs understand. Like when we say, okay, Ginger, I had you stay out of the garbage, understand Ginger, stay out of the garbage or else. But unfortunately, the dog understands blah, 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 Ginger, blah, 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 Ginger, blah, 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 which, however, is already 12% accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So we want to, to do better than this. So um, uh, thanks to the ERC, the European Research Council, uh, I got this uh, starting grant that uh, just finished uh, on multilingual word census ambiguation. So the objective was to do something about these kinds of problems that then can be used uh, as, a, as a tool for a number of applications, including uh, maybe later machine translation, but in general trying to inject more semantics into systems that don't really understand what's written in text. And so in order to achieve this objective of multilingual word census ambiguation, that is solving the, um, the problem of uh, ambiguous words uh, in context, the first part of the project was about integrating knowledge. So uh, starting from a scenario in which you have a lot of um, different resources that have been uh, online for many, many years now, uh, w which is what I call the resource diaspora. So you have things like WordNet that a lot of people are using, have been using for more than 20 years now. 
Um, you have Wikipedia that uh, many, many researchers use nowadays. Uh, you have many other resources. You have Wiktionary, Wikidata, uh, Omega Wiki. All these resources provide some kind of different uh, knowledge uh, that is uh, uh, of some use uh, uh, for humans, not only for humans, but also for machines. And so the, key the first key objective of this project was to um, start from a scenario in which you have a huge amount of different resources of a heterogeneous kind, um, some encyclopedic, some lexicographic, multilingual or uh, uh, concerning different languages, and create a resource that would unify, that would integrate all this knowledge into a single uh, uh, semantic network, uh, which is BabelNet. And so this network uh, actually has been around now for uh, five, six years. Uh, it, it keeps, uh, as you'll see uh, later, it keeps uh, uh, growing. Um, it, it initially, we started from uh, the integration of lexicographic knowledge from WordNet, which is the largest uh, English um, computational lexicon um, available, and encyclopedic knowledge from Wikipedia. So this integration uh, is possible thanks to a quite big intersection between the two resources. And um, what, what you get is, uh, from this integration, you get uh, mm, from Wikipedia mostly named entities, but also uh, several million uh, 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 domain-specific concepts. From WordNet, you get those word sentences and concepts that you would expect from a normal dictionary. And in, in the intersection, you have concepts and some identities that are available in both resources. And so the idea was that uh, from these two resources, we could get uh, the best because uh, WordNet provides a full-fledged taxonomy, at least for nouns and verbs. Um, Wikipedia provides multilingual content because Wikipedia pages are aligned across languages uh, and it's continuously updated. So you get these two kinds of uh, um, key uh, features that by, by integrating the two resources uh, give you uh, more than just uh, uh, the union of the two. And so because we know that WordNet can be viewed as a graph in which synsets are nodes and uh, uh, relations like hypernym is a relations or meronymy part of relations are edges in a graph, then um, we can uh, exploit this uh, structural information and we can do the same with uh, Wikipedia in which pages are nodes in a graph and the hyperlinks are edges connecting uh, pages. Um, however, here the edges are not labeled, so you have uh, what we call unspecified semantic relations because we don't know the kind of relation that uh, connects the two pairs, the, the, the pair of, uh, of uh, pages. Uh, so in, the in both cases we have graphs. So we have a graph which encodes uh, the knowledge uh, of, of uh, available in that resource. So what we did was to develop a number of approaches, uh, the most recent one uh, published in 2014, uh, to uh, decide which pages, which nodes in the two graphs are the same or almost the same. And so as a result of understanding of determining, determining whether these two uh, nodes are the same in the two graphs, then merging them into a single uh, um, node. And so and that would be the intersection of the two resources. So what we, we need to, to see is to understand if this concept here is the same as another concept in another graph, and the two graphs are WordNet and Wikipedia. And so what we uh, did was to uh, basically, in, in the most recent work at ACL 2014, was to apply personalized page rank. So start, basically start, uh, it's equivalent to starting um, a, a random walk with restart on the very same concept, the very same initial concept. So it's like performing a random walk with restart on the, on the concept, which keeps uh, most of the probability mass in the surroundings, in the, in the neighbors. Not, not the necessarily the right neighbors, but uh, the uh, nodes at, at easiest reach uh, in the graph starting from the initial concept. And so as a result of doing this for each and every concept, we get, for each concept we get um, a vector that tells us what are the uh, most relevant uh, key concepts that, uh, in a sense, represent the semantics of the starting concept. So if this is a starting concept like, I don't know, bank in the financial sense, uh, then the uh, highest value uh, uh, nodes in, in, the, in the resulting uh, page rank vector will be uh, hopefully uh, financial meanings, like, uh, I don't know, transaction, account, and so on. 
And so uh, as a result of this, we have what we call the semantic signature. So for each concept in each network, we have in each graph, we have a semantic signature, we have a vector that then we can, tri we can trim to um, in order to make them compatible across resources. But now I don't have time to explain if you have a question later, I can. But we, we, we make compatible and then we compare. And so the next thing to do is to see if two vectors, two semantic signature representations in two different graphs are similar enough to be merged uh, in order to be judged as, as the, the same concept. Obviously, the initial assumption is that the concepts are lexicalized the same, but this is not enough, of course, because words are ambiguous. And so, for example, if we have plant, we have a node for plant in Wiktionary, a node for plant in WordNet, and I'm using Wiktionary here because then we extended this process to other resources, not only Wikipedia and WordNet, and we just need to understand whether these two meanings of plant are similar enough to be merged. They are not, so then we uh, use another meaning in WordNet and see whether this is the case. If it's the case, we're going to merge. And so as a result of doing this for multiple resources, we get an integration of different entries from different resources uh, which produces uh, Babelnet. And so a single entry in Babelnet is the union uh, resulting from this similarity-based integration of different resources. And as a result of this, we get lexicalizations in multiple languages, definitions in many languages, including also multiple definitions in the same language, translations, uh, images, uh, and much more. So uh, obviously, as a result of this, it's a very rich resource. And the result is, again, a labeled directed graph um, in which each node is represented as a syn set, like in WordNet, since it stands for a synonym set. Uh, but it's a multilingual syn set that we call Babel syn set because we just collect all the lexicalizations available in the different resources. For so, for example, Mongolfier, Pallone Aerostatico, uh, Aerostato, Balloon are all uh, uh, available in a single syn set. Uh, it's a node of the graph, and then edges come from the various resources. For example, from WordNet, we have ISA, part of relations, and from Wikipedia, we have what we call unspecified relatedness relations. But later, we also label these, but I don't have time to explain this. But there's also some work on open information extraction, thanks to, those to, to, to which we could label uh, these edges. So Babelnet, what is Babelnet? It's a merger of resources of different kinds. And these are the current resources that we are integrating. WordNet, Open Multilingual WordNet, uh, WordNet, a French WordNet, Wikipedia, Wikidata, which is the largest collaborative knowledge base, Wiktionary, Omega Wiki, which is uh, a lesser known uh, medium-sized collaborative dictionary uh, that's that is by design multilingual, uh, GeoNames, uh, Microsoft Terminology, and high quality automatic sense space translation. So all this is integrated into Babelnet. Uh, and so, as a result, we have uh, a single entry is already multilingual by definition. And so you can, for example, search for, I don't know, Allen Wrench. The disclaimer here is that French does not have a manually curated WordNet. So because we integrate some automatically created WordNet, we might have some mistake in French. But uh, if we search uh, for Allen Wrench, what we get is... Um, it's not working, okay. Uh, we have all the translations of Allen Wrench in the various languages, and they are sorted by frequency in the various resources. So um, you, s you also see that some of these are in gray, and this is because they either come from automatic translations or from less uh, uh, safe resources. But you see that this is a quite technical term that you have translated into uh, many languages. And then you can also compare the various uh, mm, information in different languages, like here you have in three languages, definitions, synonyms, um, uh, you have also images and so on. So, and obviously you can use this uh, um, online. So, um, how do you go back to the, <laughs> I'm not a Mac user. So how do you do alt tab? Okay, here it is. No, there's no alt tab. I don't see anything here. Maybe you see it there, no. I want to switch to the... Oh, okay, okay, I see now, okay, yes. Wow, how many applications? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Chrome, okay. So, so <laughs> thank you. Okay, so then Babelnet, we can try on the fly. Okay. 
it, it's uh, okay so then i type i don't know uh plane okay and we get the various meanings of plane and uh, i can uh, immediately see some translations into any language of interest these are only some of the languages because actually you can see many more languages uh, then translate uh, and then um, you can uh, uh, enter one of these uh, entries and see all the information uh, in, in, the in, the in the languages you're interested in. Um, for example, we have more definitions with all, well, now we're, we are seeing this uh, in different languages, but you have uh, also more definitions. So you have multiple definitions for the same concept, even in the same language. Uh, you have uh, translations, images, uh, all the things that come from... Uh, um, and also for uh, uh, named entities like, I don't know, Steve Jobs, because we're talking about Apple, right? And um, uh, you have also a lot of relations that come from um, uh, Wikidata or other resources. So this is, in a sense, already a superset of the relations that you can find in Bbpedia, for example. And then finally, you can explore the network. So you can see, uh, you can start from this node in the network in Babelnet, and currently the network includes 14 million nodes, and see uh, what's in the in the surroundings of this uh, of this uh, concept named entity in this case. So, for example, I can move on and uh, uh, search for and uh, see what's uh, close to Apple Inc. Uh, and so on. So this is just you know a toy demo to show what what's um, what's in Babelnet okay and you can do this in any language okay so I'm doing this in English but uh, just to, to, to show this okay so I'll go back to the presentation okay so uh, currently thanks to this integration we covered 271 languages and 14 million entries and uh, out of these um, we have 6 million concepts and 7.7 .7 million uh, named entities, which is surprising because, uh, well, this number is automatically calculated, estimated, but still we are in the range of 6 million concepts. Why? Because how is it possible if a dictionary contains some 100,000 entries? This is because uh, resources like Wikipedia contain a lot of domain-specific terminology, which is not about named entities, it's about concepts. So um, you have a lot of word senses, you have uh, almost 400 million semantic relations, uh, 11 million images associated with concepts, and recently we also associated domains with 2 million um concepts in babelnet uh, so i think this n these numbers are also uh, interesting to to understand uh, the kind of information we have in it and the other thing i really like about babelnet is that concepts and identities are integrated so th the main th the very core of babelnet is that is this integration of lexicographic and uh, encyclopedic information, which doesn't occur, for example, in DBpedia. In DBpedia, you don't have um, uh, all the abstract meanings of a noun, you don't have verbs, you don't have adjectives. Here you have verbs connected to uh, named entities like drive a Ferrari Testarossa, or uh, you have people connected to uh, abstract concepts and so on much more than in any, uh, an, uh, in any other resource. And in a sense, this puts forward an idea of dictionary of the future, in which uh, a dictionary is no more a, a, a list of entries sorted in alphabetical uh, order, but it's a semantic network structure with labeled relations, pictures, and multilingual synsets. Um, and so, uh, well, we already saw this, but you know, I, I think this uh, integration of all this information really makes it uh, uh, a very rich resource and uh, innovative compared to what was available uh, in the last century, we can say now. Uh, it's also a full-fledged taxonomy. Start we, we initially, we only had the WordNet taxonomy, but now with the 2014 work called the Wikipedia by Taxonomy, we have a full taxonomy for all the, uh, virtually all the uh, Babelnet synsets. Um, and so we can say that uh, Ferrari Testarossa is a sports car, uh, that the sports car is a, is a car. Um, if we also go to the category, to the Wikipedia category side, which is aligned to uh, the Babelnet synthesis that contain Wikipedia pages, we also taxonomize the Wikipedia categories. So you know that, uh, I don't know, a Ferrari vehicle is a luxury vehicle and so on. Um, well, this is, uh, the other examples are, 
the CNRS, CNRS is a government agency and organization, or Babelnet is a semantic network and is also an encyclopedic dictionary and so on. So you have all this information. It's also viewable from the Babelnet website, but it's also usable from uh, the Java and the HTTP RESTful APIs. Babelnet is also downloadable for uh, research purposes uh, for free. Uh, uh, there's also a Sparkle endpoint with two billion triples. So a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. And it's actually one of the two main nodes. You can guess what is the other one uh, in the uh, so at the center, the core of the so-called linguistic linked open data cloud. So the part of the load which concerns linguistic resources. Um, as we saw already, you can, uh, as a user, search and translate, um, view all the meanings of a given uh, word or term uh, or mention. Uh, you can explore the network. So now the first question that uh, would come out is, what is the quality of this resource? Um, well, we calculate, that we have a lot of results about this, but the problem is uh, most of the uh, results about the accuracy of the mapping come from 2012, 2011. So the most recent uh, evaluation we have is the quality of the lo is a lower bound on the quality of the mapping. So this mapping concerns only the synset at the intersection between WordNet and Wikipedia, because the rest is m most of the rest is uh, of the highest quality because it comes only from one or two resources. But at the core, what you have is uh, 50,000 synsets which are in the intersection of the two resources. So we took the 6,000 lowest confidence mappings out of these 50,000 and uh, manually validated these and uh, we estimated a, a, a an accuracy of 87 percent which being the lowest ac uh, accurate ones uh, uh, tells us that uh, the overall quality of the mapping is uh, around uh, 95 percent 94 95 percent and uh, in general, um, the overall quality of the resource is much higher because all the rest is of the highest quality. Um, a key fact also is that when you create a data set with Babelnet, like for example, you annotate text with Babelnet uh, because you want to create a gold standard for disambiguation or for word simulator or whatever, the, th the fact that you annotate with Babelnet implies also annotating with all the resources it integrates. So it's actually one effort for uh, in place of uh, a number of different uh, annotations done individually in terms of WordNet, Wikipedia, Wiktionary, Wikidata, whatever. So it's like one of those shampoos uh, seven in one in which you do, you know, <laughs> okay, it does a lot of things uh, at the same time. So the point is that uh, you don't simply use Babelnet as a user, as a multilingual dictionary. And so actually the key point of the ERC project was to address the lexical ambiguity issue. And uh, the thing is that, uh, so this is a tackle paper in 2014. Uh, um, um, the, th the thing is that computers can be hungry, you discover. Uh, for example, when you uh, use, again, you know, I like these examples with statistical machine translation systems that you say you type uh, very simple sentences like the mouse ate the cheese. I, for, for Italians uh, also, you can understand e examples like the peach. When you use pesca, pesca, or pesca, this is ambiguous because it could be fishing or peach. And so these easy examples that if you have enough context, you immediately understand what is the meaning. Like, for example, mouse here uh, means uh, both the animal and the computer mouse. In Italian, in for the computer's mouse meaning, we keep using the English word. So we say mouse. And so topo is the word for the animal. So when we translate this into French, it works. La souris a mangé le fromage. Because, uh, because the word is the same in the two, uh, in the two meanings. It, 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 it preserves the ambiguity, right? In Italian, it doesn't. So what you get is il mouse ha mangiato il formaggio, which is actually this kind of uh, you know, understanding, which is not the, my, perfect, my cup of tea. Uh, so the point is we want to, I mean, really, here there are three content words. Hello. And it's making mistakes because it's not using semantics at all. And so if we get more serious and try sentences which are more complex, like uh, Thomas and Mario play the strikers in Munich, which is much harder to, to disambiguate because you have mentions like Thomas and Mario who I don't know who they were before I read this sentence the first time. Now I know. Uh, and Munich is also ambiguous because it could be the city, it could be uh, the team, and striker could also be someone who's striking. So ideally you would like to, to have something like this. So you would like to guess if these people are well known, 
who is Thomas, who is Mario, and, and so on, and these ambiguous, uh, very ambiguous verbs like play, all at the same, all at once, okay? And this is not possible with any other resource, in if you want to do it in any language. Like even DBpedia doesn't allow that, because play is a verb, and it's not available in, in DBpedia, because there are no verbs. So the, the key point is to enable um, entity linking and word sentence ambiguation at the same time. And so what are these tasks? Actually, they are very similar. Uh, word sentence ambiguation is the task of uh, assigning automatically uh, the most appropriate meaning with uh, a word uh, to a word in context. Uh, like striker is a word occurring here, it's a noun, and we want to identify automatically the right um, meaning uh, for striker in context. Um, and the, uh, the state of the art is supervised, of course, so st supervised systems uh, based on support vector machines. Now there are recent papers on uh, neural networks, but it's very close, I mean, in performance. Um, uh, it makes sense is the best performing system, the best performing uh, supervised system, uh, but it needs millions of training examples, and it doesn't cover all the content words uh, in, the l in the English lexicon. It doesn't scale to multiple languages. It works well on English, but in general, it still has limits. So the thing is, we would like to go beyond this. Entity linking is almost the same task. You have a mention, which is a mention to of a named entity like Thomas, and you want it's in context. You want to disambiguate it and link it to a mention in the uh, knowledge base, like uh, here you have Thomas Müller. And so you want to disambiguate this. But it's virtually the same task because we are doing, we are just uh, associating the, the right meaning uh, in context. And what's the state of the art? Well, the state of the art is using uh, collective disambiguation, enforcing semantic coherence. It has to be efficient because you have a, a higher, higher um, order of magnitude for the number of possible uh, entities uh, associated with a given, uh, potentially associated with a given mention. And uh, some state of the assistance are TagMe, Wikifier. Uh, they all use some similarity-based um, techniques. There are more recent developments, but uh, if you want to cover all the entities, you need to. You can't be supervised because y y you need uh, so many examples for all the possible mentions that it's hard to be supervised. Uh, you could. There are some efforts, but still, I mean, this is uh, goes in this direction. And so the thing is that we want to do the two things at the same time. And so we want to do this ambiguation and anti-linking to together. And thanks to Babelnet, we can do this because we have a huge multilingual inventory for word senses and named entities. And so the key second objective is to use the knowledge in all languages to disambiguate in one language. And this is also the reason why we call it multi-Jedi, multilingual joint word senses ambiguation. It's the acronym of the project because we see each country as uh, uh, bringing knowledge uh, competencies, let's say uh, uh, domain-specific information, like we bring a lot of uh, food names, uh <laughs> and um, you know, each th there are some concepts in Babelnet which can be lexicalized only in one, two, three languages, and they act as bridges for disambiguating other uh, words which are instead lexicalized in other languages. And so this is the idea and so that we use all this knowledge together to disambiguate in one language. And so this is uh, Babelfy. So it's our uh, disambiguation and entity linking system that uh, basically works like this. You have a sentence. Potentially, you can have also partial mentions, but this is, uh, in a sense, experimental because, of course, if you really want to do this uh, on a large scale, you might get a lot of uh, errors, but uh, in, in, in a specific sentence in which there's enough context, it works very well. Like here, for example, you have Thomas and Mario Strikers playing in Munich, and what you do is you just select all the possible mentions or partial, full or partial mentions, if you're interested in partial mentions, from uh, Babelnet. So all those synonyms, all those terms in the Babel scene sets that match uh, the content words or mentions in the sentence. You have a lot of ambiguity, of course, like for Thomas and Mario, you have maybe thousands of possible, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of possible entries. Uh, what we do is to build an interpretation graph. So we uh, connect um, possible interpretations of the various uh, words and mentions um, using just, uh, let's say, a re-ranking of the edges in Babelnet. 
Uh, and this gives us an, a quite noisy graph. Obviously, this is a small excerpt, and I'll show you the, the real excerpt. Um, and what we do is just to identify the, um, with, a, with a heuristic, because it's an MP problem, uh, the densest subgraph uh, of this uh, interpretation graph. So we, what we do is first we uh, discard peripheral nodes from this interpretation graph and uh, nodes which don't have many connections. And then what we do is to, uh, even as a, res as a result of this, we get another graph which is still a bit noisy. And then we apply a heuristic for identifying the, the densest uh, 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 interpretation graph, which as a result potentially gives us the best, uh, the best meanings. This is uh, uh, part of the real graph um, I was mentioning for this example sentence. Here you're so lucky that you have you know, uh, a click, so there's no better uh, option than uh, uh, using these senses. But in general, obviously, it's a much harder task. And so what we did was to perform the um, experiments on the disambiguation side um, for uh, using m most of the uh, available, uh, recent available disambiguation gold standard data sets from the SEMEVAL competitions. So we performed disambiguation on SENSEVAL 3 all words, SEMEVAL 2007 all words, and uh, uh, a multilingual word sense disambiguation task uh, on uh, fi five different languages. And uh, this is Babel file. We compared with the state-of-the-art supervised system with the state-of-the-art knowledge-based system that doesn't use supervision but uses similarly to Babel file uh, a, net, a semantic network and other systems participating in the, in the, in the tasks. Um, what you can see is that Babel file is either the best or in the same ballpark of the, altern the best alternative. Um, and IMS is supervised, while Babify is not. So th the, the, the most important thing here is that uh, when the star tells you when there is uh, a statistical gap between the best systems and the next uh, systems below. So these two, for example, are not, the differences are not statistically significant. But you see that uh, Babify performs uh, well at the state of the art or, or better than the state of the art in all across uh, different data sets and different languages. And in most cases, you can't just perform this ambiguation because, for example, a supervised system doesn't have millions of examples in other languages. Uh, then we performed experiments on two gold standard entity linking data sets. And uh, again, we got uh, very, very good results, either comparable with the state of the art or better. Now there are more recent systems in 2015 and 2016. I should update this. And maybe there are also better results on these two data sets. But the point, this is not the point. We're not trying to show that this is the best system ever. The point is that this is uh, the only, at the moment, as far as I know, system that performs this ambiguation and anti-leak at the same time in any language out of 2,271 uh, languages. And, um, and so, finally, I'm, I'm happy because Babelfy understands the mouse ate the cheese. <laughs> so if I type this, I get this uh, interpretation that then I can push in a button, I can see how this translates into, for example, Italian, then you get topo here and not uh, mouse. And the other nice thing is that you can see that uh, it's using, it's really using entities to help this ambiguation of uh, word senses and word senses to help the disambiguation of entities. Like for example, here you have drive, which is a very ambiguous word, very ambiguous verb, but Ferrari Testarossa help this ambiguous, which is a, an unambiguous named entity, helps this ambiguous, the, the very ambiguous verb drive. And vice versa, here you have uh, write uh, and uh, page rank, which help this ambiguous Java, which is an ambiguous named entity. It could be the island, it could be the programming language, it could be the coffee. So writing in Java tells you that uh, it's, uh, it's the programming language. So this is really the core of, of what we did. And the thing is that, as I said, you can disambigue it in any language. So for example, this is Italian, Twitter uh, uh, improves its private chat. You can communicate with everybody. And what I really like is that even if you don't speak Italian, you can at least understand what we're talking about, okay? And also, I like this crazy polyglot example, if I can do it, that it's a crazy guy, assuming it's a crazy guy who writes in, I don't know, uh, five different languages. So then I would uh, need to be able to uh, copy and paste this into Babel file to show how it works. I hope I'll be able to do that. 
Okay. B, B, Bofoy. Okay. Okay, I'll take out the labels. Because actually it's not trying to um, to uh, classify the various words by language. What we have is a language agnostic setting. It's agnostic. Okay. It's a language agnostic setting which it doesn't try to identify the language. It just uses all the possible lexicalizations across languages. And what you get is, you know, obviously there are some mistakes, but most of the things work pretty well. Um, uh, like, it, it, it gets most of the meanings. Uh, resources, jamais uh, heterogène, multiples funciones, portale is portal, website multilingual web services and even Chinese. I don't speak Chinese, but uh, it looks like this was, was a web service uh, commissioned. So it obviously it's a hard task, but it works pretty well. So and it's in five different languages. So so this is, I think, really uh, w w what I like of this uh, of this uh, uh, system. OK. So now, uh, as I said, um, Babelnet is now also a knowledge base because we are integrating semantic relations coming from Wikidata for free because Wikidata is aligned to Wikipedia. So we just take all the relations from Wikidata and integrate them in Babelnet. But we're also integrating uh, information from the info boxes as a superset of those available in Bibipedia. And also additional relations extracted from open information extraction techniques that I don't have now time to, to uh, explain. Uh, but um, this improves, with we do this with high confidence because otherwise you get a lot, a lot of noise, but uh, this even uh, uh, improves the uh, amount and quality of the, of the relations. The last part of this talk, I have 10 minutes left approximately, is how to use Babelnet to uh, create uh, word and sense vector representations that could be used for uh, tasks like uh, semantic similarity or um, word senses ambiguation as well. Um, what are the problems? The, problems I I the, the main problem is that there are lots of word-based word representations, like uh, uh, word embeddings, uh, word explicit word representations, and so on, in which vectors um, have as components either uh, latent, co lat latent components or uh, uh, word components. And so, but the main point is that these vectors concern represent the semantics of a word but the word is ambiguous, can be ambiguous. And so what you have is a vector for each word or word form. Like here you have banks and bank, but bank has multiple meanings, and these are conflated. And you have uh, a number of different approaches. You have, uh, you know, uh, network, uh, neural network-based approaches. You have probabilistic approaches. You have different kinds of approaches. There's a lot of literature on this, but our problem was how can we uh, separate uh, the vectors uh, across senses. And so uh, I'm, I'm going to overview two approaches. One is a latent representation of the word senses called sense embed, which is a work that we uh, presented last year at ACL. So as I said, the problem, the main problem we want to face, to face is to capture polysemy. So in a word vector representation, you just conflate all the meanings of uh, an ambiguous word into a single vector. But the point is that you have this vector will be closer, probably closer to uh, the uh, pr to the words which concern the predominant meaning of bank. Like for example, you will have in this case you're you're closer to. Uh, it's a bit surprising, but you're closer to the water meaning, the, the river meaning of bank, and you're a bit farther away from the financial meaning of bank. But there are many other meanings of bank. So the point is that you don't really. Uh, no, I mean, it's, it conflates the meanings, and so you want to do something about this. And the other problem is that you don't get any connection to existing knowledge resources. So we have Babelnet, but we also have Freebase that now has been shut down, unfortunately. You have Wikipedia, you have DBpedia, you have WordNet, whatever, but you don't have links from the word vectors to uh, these resources. And so our solution is to provide a distinct representation for each word's meaning. And so what we want to do is to create one vector for the first sense of bank and one vector for the second sense of bank. And these two vectors should be as far away as possible and uh, cl very close to meanings, to meaning vectors that concern the two domains or the two uh, meanings. So 
that is what we want to do. And how to do that? Actually, surprisingly, it's quite it's relatively simple and can be done in multiple ways. The first uh, option that we provided is to uh, start from the CBA architecture from Mikolov and colleagues, um, which is a very, very simple uh, neural network that uh, 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 starting from the context in which uh, a word occurs aims at uh, predicting what's the uh, word uh, that should appear in context surrounded by the uh, surrounded by the input words the idea is to not not is, is to predict basically a sense and not to predict a word so that's the idea so if we could predict a sense then we would get uh, latent representations from the embeddings uh, which are the weights the weights on the connections uh, within the network for a sense and not for a whole word so and, and so we, we need to find a way to predict senses and not to predict uh, words. So we need to train the neural network with sense examples, not just word examples. But word examples come for free because you have just, you just take a raw corpus and you do it. So what do we do? Well, basically we take a raw corpus. We have bank, all the occurrences of bank, for example, from Wikipedia. We apply Babelfy with high confidence. So we just discard all the sentences which are disambiguated with low confidence and we discriminate the various occurrences on the basis of the meanings assigned by Babelfy. And so as a result, we can train now the uh, network, the neural network, uh, for, with two for two different senses or all the senses of bank. And so we get different latent representations for the various meanings because we, we train with the, for example, here with the red examples for the financial meaning and with the blue examples separately for the um, river bank meaning. And so uh, what we did was to disambiguate the entire English Wikipedia with Babelfy and use uh, CBA, the CBA architecture with a five word window and 400 uh, latent dimensions to learn the sense embeddings. And so now instead of having word embeddings, we have sense embeddings. And these are examples, these are the top, e some examples of the top, the closest senses, the closest uh, uh, vectors, the, the closest embeddings to the various meanings of bank, number, and hood. And you can see that now the closest vectors to the geographical meaning of bank are upstream, downstream, run. You also see that you have verbs and adverbs. You have confluence, river, stream, while for financial you have commercial bank, national bank, savings, and so on. So, and this is, you get this uh, uh, for all the various meanings of all the ambiguous words. And obviously you can do this in any language. So if you just do this, apply Babelfy to, uh, to, to corporate any language, you can do this. Um, the these are the, performance, uh, the performances. Um, they go beyond uh, word to vec which is the CBAO uh, uh, implementation or SkipGram implementation uh, with the word embeddings. And these are you know, the best, the state-of-the-art uh, word embedding systems on several different word similarity data sets. These are word similarity data sets. Um, and w we have two different variants of sense embed. Now there's no time to explain, but it's very similar, very, very easy to, 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 to discuss if you have questions. But what you see is that overall, you get very high results. And sometimes one of the two variants is best, sometimes the other, but in general, both are either in the same ballpark or better than the other alternatives. And these are all the state-of-the-art alternatives which are only word-based, however. And so this is one result. Uh, the second one in, four mi in five minutes is um, a different way of, of representing uh, vectors, which is no more latent. It's explicit. So now we want to represent uh, concepts and identities with vectors that we can read, we can interpret. And so this is work that we've been publishing in different venues, ACL, NACL, and recently just accepted at uh, artificial on the Artificial Intelligence Journal. Uh, the motivation is to get something which is, uh, is as compatible as possible across languages, because the point with Sense Embed is that you have to retrain for the various languages, and the, the, the vectors are not comparable because uh, they are in different spaces which are language specific. So what we do is we, st we want to encode a ve an explicit vector for a given concept or named entity. So what we do is to collect a corpus of documents which we for which we use Wikipedia pages. 
which in a sense represent the uh, lexical semantics of this concept or named entity. Obviously, we start from, well, we, we also use BabelNet for doing this. So for example, let's say we are focusing on this Babel synset, which is, um, which contains, so it's about the, lep the reptile meaning uh, in Wikipedia. So this is uh, this just means uh, it's contained in BabelNet. And so what we take is uh, all the pages, obviously the, the very same page of the concept, but also all the pages which link to this concept. So for example, snake, which is in this Babel synset, which links to this other lizard, vertebrate, uh, but also um, inter-article inter links um, and uh, taxonomic uh, links like is a uh, relation. So we collect all these pages from the links that we have and we create a subcorpus of Wikipedia that represents as much as possible the semantics of the given concept. Um, so now we have this subcorpus and we also have a reference corpus which is the entire Wikipedia. And the goal is to create a vector that represents the semantics of the concept of interest. And we do, uh, we create three variants of these vectors. A lexical vector which has words as components, but this is not multilingual. A unified vector in which instead you have Babel synsets as components. And finally, an embedded vector which has latent dimensions. So how do we do this? The lexical vector is quite easy because what we want to do is to extract lexical uh, information, words, terms that are available in the subcorpus for that concept and use some measure of specificity to the concept. And what we do is to use lexical specificity, which is based on hyper uh, hypergeometric distribution over word frequencies. So it tells us how, s how specific to the subcorpus the, the given term is compared to the whole reference corpus. And unlike conventional TF-EDF, it's not particularly sensitive to different text lengths because, of course, we have subcorporal different lengths. And, um, and so we have now a conventional vector with words as dimensions and whose values, whose weights in the components are given by lexical specificity. For example, for the bank financial institution page and subcorpus in Wikipedia, we get these top uh, terms uh, in English, in French, in the Spanish Wikipedia, and the same for similarly for bank geography. And you can see that already the top terms are already quite good. So they express the semantics, but they are language specific. So in order to generalize, what we do is to um, uh, exploit the uh, taxonomy of BabelNet. Because we know in BabelNet that, for example, for the river sense of bank, uh, ocean, lake and sea are bodies of water. So we have this information. So we can generalize as much as possible terms which are uh, language specific uh, in terms of a BabelNet synset because we can uh, identify those terms which uh, have a common hypernym and um, value this hypernym which is now a Babel synset so it's, it's language independent. And so now what we can do is basically to um, have Babel synsets as dimensions and these dimensions are computed as the uh, uh, sums of the weights of the uh, terms that come from the initial lexical vector and which have as hypernym the, the corresponding uh, BabelNet synset. And so as a result of this, we can transfer semantic knowledge across languages because I can learn a vector for a given language and then exploit it in any other language. And we can perform cross-lingual semantic comparison. So we have a vector that is language independent. And these are examples. So um, you have, uh, for English, for example, you have this top uh, component. If you do, if you start from the English lexical vector, you have these top uh, synsets as components. And in French, you have these top synsets. In Spanish, you have these top synsets. But you see from the uh, uh, symbols here that there's a lot in common, which means that even if we repeat the process over languages, we still get on top most of the same meanings, maybe not in the same rank, but close to it, okay. And so the resulting semantic vectors, whether I start from English or Spanish, is very similar. And finally, we also created uh, an embedded representation, which is quite easy because it's a weighted sum of, uh, it's a weighted average of the uh, em word embeddings of the uh, components of the lexical vector. So we start from the lexical vector and we sum with different weights the embeddings of the, uh, of the words in the vector and then uh, normalize. And you can see that these are the closest um, embedding vectors to the various, and again, it works pretty well. So you get, uh, 
much of the semantics preserved and it's uh, sense specific. But we, you can also get a vector for the word because uh, we are doing this for uh, any text virtually. So it could be a subcorpus, but it could also be the subcorpus of all the, the meanings of a given sense. And so now we have in the same space meanings and words. So you can compare a word to a meaning and see, for example, what is the most, the predominant meaning by seeing what is the closest meaning to uh, the, the target word. The results, and I'm done. Um, uh, uh, this is sense embed, the other approach. And these are the variants of Nasari, the three variants of Nasari, lexical, unified, which means uh, generalized and embedded. And you also have a Nasari which combines the first two. So it's basically a vector, which is the concatenation of words and uh, scene sets. But you see that uh, overall the performance is pretty good. The average performance over three different uh, word similarity data sets is highest. Uh, here you, you don't always have the state of the art, but uh, overall it performs pretty well. And uh, in most of the cases, but uh, Miller and Charts, you get better performance than Sense and Bet. And what we like here is that it's multilingual, it's comparable, and so on. And also, we perform cross-lingual word similarity experiments where we get the state of the art. So I again, the problem is when you use other approaches, when you move to other languages, you don't get the same uh, results. Here, you, you get very good results. Even state-of-the-art systems like polyglot, retrofitting, word to vec they don't get the same results as us. And we, do this in, uh, we did this in uh, four different languages, calculated Pearson and Spearman. Uh, finally, we calculated multilingual word senses ambiguation on, uh, on the same data set uh, uh, used uh, for Babelfy, but only for uh, Wikipedia as a sense inventory. And again, interestingly, this is a very simple disambiguation algorithm. For a given word in context, you just take the closest sense vector to the uh, word vector of the context. And uh, it works very well. This is Babelfy. And this is Nasari, and uh, it gets uh, either the state of the art or close to it uh, without doing all the complexity of Babelfy. So now we are working on integrating this into Babelfy because it works pretty well. So to summarize, I presented Babelnet, Babelfy for disambiguating entity linking together, uh, latent and explicit representations of meanings. So now what will you do with Babelnet tonight? Thank you, or merci. <laughs>